How well do you maintain your grounding equipment? Neglecting your grounding equipment may result in a catastrophic failure. I'm Kirk Mulder and this is Bill Wolf, and today we're going to be looking at our 7714 ground cable tester. Bill and I were both linemen for many, many years and both of us seen many different types of grounding practices from single point grounding, double grounding, bracket grounding, equipotential grounding, working between grounds, but none of those methods really matter if our ground sets are no good. With this tester here, we can test our grounds, uh, identify problem areas, and then bring our grounds back to their maximum performance. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the tester, we'll be testing the ground, troubleshooting some ground sets, and talking about some frequently asked questions from the field. Uh, so right now I'm going to turn it over to Bill. Bill, uh, just go over a basic uh, introduction of the machine and how it's used. Sure, Kirk. Well, this is a 7714 ground jumper tester. Uh, it's housed totally self-contained in a sturdy container. Inside you'll find everything you need to do your jumper testing. It'll be a cord that you hook up to a 120 volt outlet. You can also run this off of a generator if you're in the field. Electrodes for standard C-clamp style jumpers. Uh, there's other accessories that we'll discuss later. Uh, this is an input voltage meter. This is going to be, this will tell you what you're putting in from the dial, input dial over here. This is your percentage amperage meter and this will give you the testing result. Uh, we're looking for a range between 95 and 105 and you'll see later how we'll see the reading on that. On off switch and the circuit breaker. So everything you need to do your test is included and is portable. Well we're just about ready to do a test on the ground but before we do that uh, we should do a visual inspection. Uh, there's no sense of testing before we do a visual so Bill what are some of the things that you would look for in a visual inspection? All right. Well first of all we're going to start at one end and work our way to the other. We're going to inspect the clamps so that there are no cracks or uh, deep gouges or anything that might be suspicious in the clamp. We're going to check that for operation and make sure everything moves freely. Uh, this is a movable jaw on this uh, duckbill clamp so we're going to make sure that that goes up and down easily. We want to run the eye screw up and down a little bit so that we know that we can get a good tight fit on the, on the uh, wire. Do a quick check with your hands for tightness on any of the nuts or anything, this, uh, any of the connection points. Check the ferrule for any cracks again or any corrosion at the bottom. Uh, it looks like a pretty good clamp. So now we're going to go on to the cable. We run our hand down the cable and visually inspecting as we go and I'm feeling for any nicks, any cuts, any bulges, anything that would indicate a problem on the cable underneath. Uh, any knotting in the cable from over twisting it one end to the other and I go to my other clamp doing the same inspection of the ferrule that I did on the other side checking it for tight on the connections running the eye screw doesn't appear to be bent looks fine and there's no cracks Kirk this is a good jumper okay so we just done a visual and Bill said that he thought it was a good ground set but until we test it we really don't know the visuals great but we've got to test it before we know for sure uh, two things when you test you have to know two things. One is the, the length of the cable, the other is the size of the cable. Both of them are very important. If you mess up on either one of them, you're going to influence the, uh, the outcome of your test. Okay, we're now ready to measure our cable, and we have to measure from ferrule end to ferrule end. And I've got 6 foot 11 inches. So we'll go to our chart now and see what our input voltage will be. Okay, we're ready to test our ground jumper here. Uh, the first thing we need to do is install our, uh, our electrodes here in the side of the machine. Where we test the ground is very important. You want to make sure that you're not around any metal. So we don't want to do this on a metal table. In this case here we're using a wood table. If for some reason our ground sets are quite long and we have to use the floor, we want to make sure there's no rebar in the floor. Uh, if, if there is rebar in the floor, we have to get that ground set up off the floor about three feet. Uh, rubber blanket will not work. We do have to get, get away from the floor, so we want to do that. And we can do that different ways. We can do it with uh, saw horses, road cones, uh, hanging it from a rope, whatever we need. And the last thing that we have to do before we test is to just do a quick wire brush of the jaw. 
make sure that we get any oxidation that might be on the jaw off. And this is real important is to wire brush your electrodes. Uh, they're copper electrodes, so that's a connection point, so we want to make sure those are clean as well. Now we're ready to make our test. You know, we talked about the metal table. Another uh, thing that's got to be taken into consideration, you don't want to have this cable twisted in any way. It's got to be laid out in this configuration here. That's perfect for our test. Now we're ready to go ahead and make our test. We're going to flip the unit on. Our input voltage now, our reading needs to be 209 from we got, what we got from the chart. We're going to dial this up by just turning the, the dial here to 209. And you can see we're right in our acceptable range between 95 and 105 percent. This ground is good. There's nothing else that needs to be done. Okay, we're testing another ground set here, and this time we've got a number two cable here, so we're going to have to go to a different chart. Uh, Bill has already done his visual. He told me that it was good visually. Uh, our input voltage is 350 millivolts, and you can see on our percent meter that we're way below the 95 to 105. We're at 38.7. Uh, that's telling us that we've got a lot of problems here. So we've identified that we've got a bad cable, but now how do we find out where the cable is bad? There's two ways we can do that. The best way is with a voltmeter, and you need a voltmeter that can read millivolts. And in this case, Bill's got that, so he's gonna go over there and uh, do his checks. And set it to my millivolt meeting, reading. What I'm looking for is a voltage drop of less than 10 millivolts. I'm gonna go between all of my connection points, and that includes from the electrode. This clamp happens to have a, movable, a removable jaw. So I'm gonna go from the electrode to the removable jaw. There I have uh, four millivolts, so that's a pretty good connection. From the removable jaw to the clamp body now, there's a questionable connection. There's a 13.7 millivolts, so I'd have to question that, and that may just need cleaning. That's not a terrible one. Now from my clamp body to my ferrule, there's a nine millivolt reading there, so that would be within an acceptable range. And from my ferrule, to my cable, and I'm going to have to puncture the jacket to get down to the cable here, but being as how we already know we have a faulted ground, we're going to have to make sure that that connection is good, and this is not good. Now here I'm getting 111, 112 millivolt uh, voltage drop between this, so I can tell now that I have a bad connection in here. Uh, to save time, I'm going to just explain to you that we would then do the other side as well, check all the connections over on the other side of the jumper, uh, the same way we did on this side be looking for that same voltage drop. Okay, let's say you're out in the field and you don't have a voltmeter. I told you that there was two ways to check. The other way would be to dial up your voltage. In this case, we already did dial up the voltage to 100% and then start feeling for heat. And Bill, I think you're gonna feel quite, quite warm there on that one bad connection there. It is very hot already. So I'm checking over here and I feel some warmth in this one too. So uh, that would be another way to check. You just feel for, for heat and that's a place for high resistance. Every unit comes with an instructional uh, chart here, and uh, you can see it there as Bill flips through there. Uh, you'll notice that we can do uh, other testing besides just our ground jumpers. Uh, here we can test our truck grounding reels, both our large and small truck grounding reels, and it gives full instructions on how to do that. Uh, this page here, if you have other things going on, in this case an elbow ground, uh, we can test that. Parking stands, we have the capability of testing those. Uh, your ball studs. Uh, if you have ball stud clamps, we can test there, and we can also test our mechanical jumper heads, and it gives you instructions on where to measure there. We also have a load pickup tool that can be tested on this machine, and here it just gives you some right and wrong ways of how to lay out your cable. Then we go into the, the actual chart here, and it has the different cable sizes, number two, one aught, two aught, and four aught. We receive questions all the time from the field when they're doing their tests and they're having problems getting their grounds to pass. And uh, Bill, what would be some of the frequently asked questions that you hear from the field? Well, most of the time it's somebody that's done a pretty good job of cleaning their jumper and they pull them off of trucks that haven't been using them for a while or the grounds are within a year old and they tell me that they're brand new. Um, one of the most common problems when you're 
when you tested a ground jumper and it failed is we did not properly clean it prior to putting it on the tester. And that includes cleaning the electrodes. So as you saw us in our test, we cleaned the electrodes, cleaned the jumper, the clamps, wire brush in there very good, and do a good visual inspection. Uh, another common problem is that we didn't measure correctly. If, uh, if the jumper is six foot eight and we measure it out to be six foot uh, three or six foot eight, 11, that's gonna change our input voltage and the input voltage is gonna dictate what our percentage reading is at the end so we get an inaccurate reading. Uh, another problem is that we may have a 50 foot ground jumper or a 30 foot ground jumper and it's not gonna fit on this nice uh, non-metallic table that we have here. So if we run that out inside of a uh, parking area, inside of a building on a concrete floor, the rebar is going to actually interfere with the test in there because there's a magnetic field around this jumper. So we need to maybe get that out and put that on a, on a asphalt parking lot without all the metal uh, in, the, in the ground and whatever is in the ground would be down three or four feet and out of our testing area. We can also string that along the top of cones. We can put it on saw horses or we can uh, hang it from ropes whatever you have to do to clear that out of, of any interference. And probably the biggest problem that we run into uh, is people using welding cable as their grounding cables and the welding cable doesn't always conform to the ASTM ground cable standards. So this tester will identify if you have a, uh, a, a welding cable that doesn't meet that standards you may end up with readings around 90%, 89%. Uh, just not quite being able to get it up to a passing 95% and there's nothing you can do to get that to pass. It doesn't have the cable strand or the copper content in there to get it to pass. So those are most common problems. Uh, I would say that if you have a test out there, a jumper that you're testing and it doesn't pass, you've done everything you think you can, you're welcome to call in here. Kirk or I would be on the phone. Uh, we can talk you through it. We can give you some suggestions and uh, go through it as you're actually doing the test. We hope this video was helpful uh, showing you the use of it and also testing your grounds. If you are having problems with your ground sets passing, uh, by all means call in. And it's helpful if you call in while you're doing your test. Bill and I are here on the phone all the time and we can walk you through it and, and help you get your grounds to pass.